This diffraction gradient, number two? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think it is about relativity. Uh oh. Because it's like, it says. We can do it if you want that. Yeah, can we do sure. it? All right, this is actually a Doppler effect question, so we have to go back and review the Doppler effect. So we can start with the Doppler effect uh, for sound, but here we'd be using light. So let's say that uh, here we have a car with a siren and it's emitting sound, I'll just make up a, a frequency. I don't even know what the right frequencies are for sound, but I'll just make up a uh, frequency. So let's say it's emitting sound at 500 hertz. That's probably not the frequency of sound. But anyway, uh, so the car is moving this way. So this is the actual frequency of the sound, but what frequency is this person going to observe? Are they going to observe a higher or a lower frequency when the car is coming towards them? means? What, what are the units for frequency? So one over seconds. One over seconds. That's a good unit. There's another unit, though, that's better. And we talked about the best unit for frequency. What would be a good thing to put in the numerator? What does the, what does the frequency tell you? If, if we say the frequency is 500 hertz, what, what does that mean? Wavelengths? Looks like we should review that. So it tells us that it's going through 500 cycles per second. Yeah. Something with a frequency of 500 hertz means that it's going through 500 cycles per second. So it's really um, best to think of the unit of frequency as cycles per second. The best way to think of the units for frequency is cycles per second. That's what hertz means. Hertz is just cycles per second. Sometimes people just say per second, but it's best to think of it as cycles per second. Think about like if there was someone here who was throwing 500 baseballs per second. But let's say that they're moving towards this person. Well, is this good person going to catch 500 baseballs per second or more or less than 500 if the person is not only throwing but also running towards them? So if this is moving towards them, uh, we know that they're throwing 500 uh, per second, but is this person going to catch 500 per second or more than 500 per second or less? Well, let's think about it. Since they're moving towards them, each of the baseballs um, is going to get to the person faster, right? Right, because the distance is getting smaller. So because they're moving towards them, the person is going to have to wait. Um, there's going to be less time between the catches than between the throws. There's going to be t less time between the catches than between the throws. So this person is actually going to get hit with more than 500 baseballs per second. You can kind of think that the car is kind of helping the baseballs along, right? So F prime here would be bigger than F. Or what about this person? If somebody here is throwing baseballs at this person while the car is moving away, are they going to get hit by more or less than 500 less. baseballs per second? Okay. So the point is that the observed frequency can be different from the real frequency depending on which way the car is going. Okay. All right. Now, if you know the frequency, what does that tell you about the wavelength? So, for example, um, how would we figure out uh, the uh, – so let's get away from the baseballs for a second. But if the frequency is 500, how would we figure out the wavelength? If you know the frequency, how do you find it? Equation? Is it like mm -hmm. C lambda or something? Yeah, so let's say exactly what equation we use. F equals C lambda? Like that? Yeah. 
like this. C equals, I don't know, something like that. So the basic equation, this is the basic equation. This is a very important equation to actually memorize. This is not something that you want to have to look up. Speed equals f times lambda. This, this comes up so much that we should just have this memorized. Speed equals f times lambda. Mm -hmm. Good thing to make a flashcard. So the speed equals the frequency times lambda. So if you know the frequency, you could plug into this equation and find lambda over here. Uh, so based on this equation, so here we have that the observed frequency is big, right? Does that mean the observed wavelength would be big or small? If the frequency, observed frequency, is bigger than at the source, then it's smaller. You can see that from this equation, there's an inverse relationship between f and lambda. If f is big, lambda has to be small because the wave just has a constant speed of light. So what's the relationship between the lambdas over here? It's greater. The observed lambda is bigger. Okay. So that's going to be one of the key equations that we need. All right, we could use this for sound, but we could also use this for light. Yeah. All right, now we have to figure out how much change there's going to be in the frequencies. Well, for that, we can use the Doppler equation. And this is from your last semester. Last, uh, last semester, you saw this equation for the Doppler effect. So let's go through this. Let's see what everything here stands for. So in our example here, what would f be? Well, f is this, the frequency of the sound that's generated at the car. Uh -huh. So what would f prime stand for? Uh, and what does this variable stand for? Uh, sound wave? Yeah, speed of the sound wave. And this would be the speed of? because that's the source of the sound. Okay, uh, and then how do you know whether you use a plus or a minus down here? Well, um, you figure it out based on what we were just talking about here. So let's talk, say we're talking about this case over here. Uh, so we know in this case, f prime should be bigger than f. Um, that is, we need f prime to be big. Well, in order for f prime to be big, we need this right-hand side to be big. So do we want this denominator to be big or small? Small. We want f prime to be big. We want the denominator to be small. Well, how can we make the denominator small? So you use minus. So then you would subtract. That's right. So in that case, you would subtract. On the other hand, how about in this case? Well, here we want f prime to be smaller. So you add. So then you would add to get a bigger denominator. So you have, you have to understand this so that you can figure out whether to use a plus or a minus down here. So that's our Doppler equation. So we could use this to um, we could use this equation to figure out um, the uh, frequency, and then once we know the frequency, how would we find the wavelength? Um, you do f equals f lambda. Then we could use this equation. That's right. Whose speed would we put in here? The car or the wave? The wave. Because this is about the frequency of the wave and the lambda lambda of the wave. So this would be the speed of the wave over here. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's another equation that we'll need. All right, and then that was just a review from uh, last semester of the Doppler effect and waves. Now, this is also introducing new material, which you covered this uh, just the last couple weeks on diffraction. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, let's see, how does this uh, go here? Hydrogen line. Okay, so the, here they have a diffraction grating so we need the equation for a diffraction grating. The bright lines from a diffraction grating. Have you started making your cheat sheet yet? No. Okay, so you might not have that equation. It's like in This is what we talked about, I guess, in our last session, which was that um, 
when you shine light through slits or through a grating, you get a whole series of bright and dark spots. And this is the equation for the bright spots. I should say bright spots, not bright lines. This is the equation for the bright spots that you're going to get uh, from a grating. So if we have a grating here, we have a bright spot, then another bright spot, then another bright spot. There'd be a whole series of bright spots on the screen. 